I'm Louise Alexander and I'm a life model. For me, it's, it's actually very much a sacred space. It's at best I can describe it as my own little cave almost. It's, it's a creative space for me that I can actually just kind of feel really connected to myself and it's really difficult to explain because it's it's a connection that goes beyond um, conscious connection it just is so can you tell us one of your stories around being in the zone um, okay so I, I was thinking about this and the earliest, I guess, connection or memory that I have of being in the zone within life modeling was actually when I am, um, I had gone to a workshop that the Life Model Society ran. And the workshop is something that you have to do to get an in, to be able to get an invitation to Life Model Society. Um, I didn't realise that until I actually got there that it was a situation where you had to actually be able to, I guess, audition for want of a better word, um, in terms of how we moved within um, within the space, um, utilise the space, but also how we moved to music. Not that there would be music with life modelling, um, but the confronting thing about it was it wasn't a solo audition, it was an audition along with a number of other people, um, which was yeah, quite confronting going, yeah, I'm comfortable being nude, but I don't. I actually just, this sounds really weird, but I actually zoned out. from and, and almost detached in a way from all of them because initially it was quite confronting in terms of being feeling quite intimidated by whether you know certain poses and movement etc was I guess better than mine because it's natural to be competitive I guess and I found that I had to actually just go inside myself and basically just move in terms of what was natural um, pose uh, in terms of seated poses standing poses all of that what was natural for me so that my it was beyond just the physical it was just about being in that presence actually shone through so were you aware of them once you're in that space um, kind of on the peripheral yeah like, I, I, th th there was this consciousness that they were there, but it, it was almost like they, like they blurred out. Um, if I was looking, I guess, at a, through them, uh, looking at them through a camera lens, I would have been in focus and they would have blurred out. So you said it was a sacred place. What do you mean by that? Um, Sacred because um, for me, sacredness is about spirituality and it, it's where I totally fully connect with myself. Um, so it, it, it's, it's Zen-like in that I truly connect to myself as an earth being um, and, and within that sacred space I honour everything about myself as a a child of the earth I guess yeah um, and it's going it's it's not even about the art that actually comes because I have to admit I don't even often look at the art that gets produced from what what I do in life modeling um, it's for me just basically about honoring myself um, 
honouring everything that is inside of me um, that I can actually convey through not only, as I said, it's beyond the physicality, it's more about holding a certain grace um, uh, within the pose or a um, just being so completely comfortable and one with myself that whatever I'm actually feeling in that moment can actually actually translate to the person that's drawing me. That they're actually picking up on more than just the physicality, but that they're actually picking up on where I am in this space of comfort and um, oneness with myself. Are you thinking when you're in that state? No. Um, not often. I don't actually recognise. It doesn't become... It's not something that is conscious. It's... Um, it's something that I kind of connect with or, or I have the, the recognition of it more than anything afterwards. But when I'm actually in that space, um, it's, it's not a conscious um, projection, I suppose, of, of making that connection. It, it's, it's organic. So how do you get yourself and do you commonly get yourself into that space? I, I do. With, um, with life modeling, I do automatically, it's like just a switch. And it happens just before I walk into the studio that I'm, or the, the space that I'm going to model in. It's, as soon as I walk through the door, there's this switch. And almost, it's not so much taking on a different persona, but it almost feels like it. Yeah. Um, that I actually, go in and and I automatically I actually find that I automatically become more still right so um, what conditions induce that switch or what do you think or do it's very much internal yeah for me yeah because I find that I actually shift in terms of how I how I'm communicating with people that I'm that are going to be drawing me um my, my tones drop, drop. Um, it is a stillness, um, it is a, there's a del deliberate um, sort of way of actually speaking even in terms of, I talk very, very fast normally because um, sometimes there's too many thoughts running through my head but when I get into that space it's, it's like I put a cloak over myself. Yeah. It's more than mental preparation. It is. There is mental preparation in terms of just walking in and just getting myself ready for it. Yeah. But it's become automatic in yes. that I used to do it consciously when I first started modelling. That was over eight years ago, almost nine years ago. And now it is something that just switches automatically and it's very difficult to explain how it actually happens because it isn't something that I do consciously right I am yeah. conscious of it happening and I in terms of I recognize it actually started out as a it actually started out as a method of which this is going to sound really strange but it started out as me projecting a protective sphere around myself mm-hmm and it kind of just evolved to going beyond that. So the, the, the consciousness, it did start, started really conscious in that I was trying to create that distance. Yeah. Um, still holding the space and still having, I guess, a connection, but almost forcefully throwing my energy field out yeah. um, so that people instinctively in terms of everyone else in the room instinctively would only come this close to the podium and no further. Yeah. Um, and it kind of just evolved into something that could, I could still hold that space but actually reach beyond it to actually have that connection with the artists where it was actually an exchange of energy between myself and the artists. Yeah. And it's also about, I guess for me, it's a consciousness because it's really funny. I mean, I, I have a girlfriend who, when she 
invariably if she introduces me to someone new, I don't know if it's it's part of a shock factor or whether it's something that she's still trying to get her head around. But she'll always describe it as, you know, Louisa's life model and she models naked for artists. And I, and I always have to correct her yeah. about the difference between being naked and, and actually completely emotionally vulnerable as well. Yeah. Um, as opposed to nude actually being a state of dress. And, yes. And that's kind of evolved for me as well in terms of... Um, really being comfortable in my nude state of dress yeah and even though I guess I am conscious of the fact that I am nude um, I there's no limitation in terms of how I move or self self-consciousness in how I move um, or, or, or pose or whatever um, when I'm in that space because because I'm actually within myself so it's just I just let it flow and um, I let the actual, I mean I've, I've done different forms of dance over the years and I actually just kind of put myself into sometimes the dancer's space of just letting the fluidity of dance kind of take over and allowing that movement to just come naturally and not worry about, um, I s certainly have not made it a conscious thing of worrying about how my body actually looks because um, there's no space in life modeling for that, for, for me anyway, for that level of self-consciousness.